Hello anatomy colleagues, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this supplementary dissection video, we will be discussing the umbilical fold, sometimes referred to as the peritoneal umbilical folds. So recall, umbilical folds are created by peritoneum and the surrounding structures lying over or covering structures that will create a slight but often noticeable bump. So let's get our bearings regarding what is going on with this image. The anterior abdominal wall has been incised and reflected anteriorly. And what we're looking at in this general region right here is the deep portion or inside of the anterior abdominal wall. You're looking into the peritoneal cavity here. You can see a bit of the mental apron. Um, but what we're gonna focus on is this deep portion of the anterior abdominal wall. There are three types of umbilical folds that are present here. And depending on the individual, these can be quite obvious or markedly less so. So understanding the basic areas and what is creating the fold are really of what's importance, uh, what, of, what is of importance here. So let's start with the median umbilical fold. And I'm gonna kind of outline where that is located. This is unpaired and it's in the midline, so there, there's only one median umbilical fold. And this is created by peritoneum covering the median umbilical ligament, which is a remnant of the fetal urachus, a connection between the apex of the bladder, so the bladder would be deep uh, and inferior in this region, and um, it would connect that, the bladder to the umbilicus. So this is an example of a developmental remnant. In close proximity and just lateral to the median umbilical ligament are the medial umbilical ligament. So I'm gonna outline those right here. So very close um, to the median, um, also very close in name. So median umbilical ligament, of which there's only one, is in the median plane, and the medial umbilical ligaments are going to be medial to the lateral umbilical folds. Now these medial umbilical folds are going to be formed by peritoneum covering the medial umbilical ligaments. And these are formed by the obliterated or closed portion of the umbilical arteries. There are some portions of the umbilical arteries that are patent or opened in an adult, but the portions that are here that we just outlined, um, these are, this portion is closed, so closed to being involved in blood flow. And that is why this is a developmental ligament. Lastly, there are the paired lateral umbilical folds, which are notably lateral. And on this individual, I think they are kind of difficult to observe. I'm outlining one right here. The other one would be in this general region right here, but it's not quite as noticeable. You can see a bit of it right in this middle portion here. Um, this fold is unique in that it is not peritoneum covering a developmental remnant but it's covering the fully patent inferior epigastric vasculature, which is very important in supplying and draining the inferior portions of the abdominal wall. Now in actual dissection, I find it's typically these folds that I try to identify first because you can often see the vessels pretty easily through the peritoneum and transversalis fascia. However, I must admit it is a little difficult to differentiate in this image. You can see it here and not quite as obvious over here. Um, but these are in their, their general locations and quite a bit lateral to this complex right here towards the middle. Okay, so those are the umbilical folds. Please understand basic locations here. And as it's covered here and in the learning objective videos, understand what deep structures are causing these noticeable folds. Please let me or any of my anatomy colleagues know if you have any questions, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.